Good morning and welcome from all around the world to Structural Heart Life Cases, broadcasting directly from the Cardiac Catheterization Laboratory at the Mount Sinai Fuster Heart Hospital. My name is Pedro Moreno, I'm a professor of medicine and I will be your moderator today. We would love to hear from you, so please send us your questions either on, from the website or in YouTube. And before we start, we want to thank those who attended our transcatheter valve course on Thursday, December the 7th, just last week. To view those live cases, uh, the recorder lectures, and to download the presentations, please visit to www.nytranscatheterValves.org. They will be uploaded in about two weeks. And without more ado, we have a great case for you today. So let me transfer you to the cardiac catheterization laboratory. Stan, what do you think? All right. You left. You left. Okay. Then go a little. All right. Good morning to all our CCC viewers of the structural heart intervention. And this is a very interesting case because we have shown all types of valvin valve, tau and tau, and uh, of course, the tower yeah. and the mitral that's clip. Good. That's good, we bro. thought we end the year with the go, go. TMVR. We actually showed go. one tricuspid, uh, TTVR also. So with that's that good. note, let's good. just good. show uh, our uh, start with a slide presentation because both uh, uh, are ready. So just to before we even go Take on. Take your tea up. Yeah. Tea so, up. Yeah. So these are our uh, structural hard life supporters. Uh, and uh, these are all involved physicians and, uh, and surgeons, actually. As you know, Gilbert Tang is uh, conspicuously absent. I think he's in uh, Japan uh, for some meeting. And uh, Dr. Shinobu uh, is representing our surgical Kali. And uh, cardiac anesthesiologist Morgan Montgomery. And, of course, Pedro is moderating. So this case is a TMVR in high-risk patient with a degenerated surgical mitral valve prosthesis. This is our case number 56. 69-year-old patient presented with shortness of breath and had leg edema. Initially thought maybe had halt, so he started on anticoagulation. Did nothing happen. And uh, patient continues to be well, symptomatic. As you see, the multiple medical conditions Heparin. with EF of around 40%. Uh, multiple PCIs also, uh, last one few years ago, and uh, patient had uh, mitral regurgitation, had MVR with a 29 millimeter perimount 6900 valve 15 years ago. So patient got a good uh, life of the mitral valve, which was done at the age of 54. Uh, medications and patients with normal sinus rhythm uh, and the echo showed so abnormal time. mitral prosthesis due so to valve time. stenosis uh, with a gradient and uh, e yeah. ejection fraction about 45 seven, seven. and no evidence of left atrial thrombus. So clearly uh, we can show the live uh, with the mitral now uh, if we can show that. Live echo by Stam Larakas is there on. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sharma. As you can see here, this uh, deep gastric images of the left ventricle, LVF about 40%. The scale. Uh, long axis, the same, about 40% LV ejection fraction. Uh, tricuspid valve, uh, there as you can see, and the matra valve in the center. Uh, mild TR. Uh, left atrial appendix clean. Uh, Zero the aortic everything. valve, great. Uh, no AS or AI. And we focus now on the uh, matter valve by commissural. Uh, you can see the matter valve prosthesis. You can appreciate on the right side that one of the uh, leaflets of the prosthesis doesn't move, and also the leaflets appear thickened. The grade that we got today was four, uh, but the, uh, the heart rate of about uh, 50. This is a 3D image. You can see that the two leaflets are thickened and they are moving, but the posterior leaflet uh, is uh, stuck, doesn't move at all, and is calcified and then generated. No much uh, uh, valvular a, uh, MR and uh, no evidence of uh, paravalvular regurgitation. Uh, this is a true view image. The same, the posterior leaflet of the prosthesis doesn't move. No much uh, matter regurgitation, mostly uh, degenerative matter stenosis in this case. This is the glass image. Again, no MR. Uh, the area that we get today is uh, 1.4, consistent with severe matra stenosis, no MR, and the orthomatral angle uh, for uh, a neol VOT obstruction is uh, 120, which is uh, wide, and the risk of uh, neol VOT obstruction is low with this angle, and the gradient through the LVOT to have baseline peak gradient is 3. Thank you very much.
Okay, very good. So maybe before uh, we go on, can we just go to the camera again? Because I, uh, we already, since they were doing the procedure, I didn't have an introduction of the staff. My colleagues here is Dr. Keeney, uh, Dr. Sail Khera, you know all, our, and then we had Dr. Shinobu, uh, our surgeon, and uh, then Raju Samtani and Richard, uh, our fellows, and uh, Nona. Uh, also, we actually have a surgical uh, attending who is doing the structural fellowship. Uh, Dr. Nona Toda. So with all that and rest all seen, uh, I've seen, uh, and of course, uh, Dr. Stam Laracas will guide us. Uh, this patient had a coronary angiogram done because of uh, uh, issues uh, in the past, which is okay. Uh, now I can direct it to uh, Dr. Keene. Anu, tell us what's going on now. So if you can show the angiogram, yeah, you can showing see the it, coronary yeah. angios, non-obstructive. So we've completed the transeptal. The usual, if you see here, we use uh, start coming down exactly where we think we are ready. So if you see the prosthetic mitral valve, um, so just we would say at the level, if you take the prosthetic mitral valve in the RAO view, you draw a line, okay, where you are uh, half. So this transceptal should be just at that level and uh, as much as you go, go posterior to one sapien valve. Further? Okay. okay. Yep. So that's where we did the transeptal. Right at that. And, and any special catheter used for transeptal or regular radio frequency needle? Radio frequency regular. needle, that's it. Okay. That's it. And you slowly advance it. So that's where you are now? Yeah, yeah, we have it. So we initially gave 2,000 heptin while doing a transeptal and now we have given full anticoagulation. Uh, we'll check an ACT. We are across. And show uh, the hemodynamics on one side also, please, in the bottom. So that's EDP and uh, LA pressure. So uh, I think uh, echo-wise, there was a gradient about 9 to 10. And you probably have about five, six, clearly patient under anesthesia, they always goes down, the yeah. gradient. Uh, and that's uh, we are. So let me just complete the presentation now. So we had done the transeptal. Uh, go back to presentations. Uh, so we, and then we'll come to the, doing the actual procedure. T already, already had been shown. Uh, this is that, uh, just part of it. We know the one leaflet was immobile. Uh, who wants to make it with the valve and valve mitral app? So, uh, yeah, so Vinnie Bapat's app here, uh, the mitral valve uh, app. So we have a C Perimount 6900. It's a 29 valve. It's a reasonably big size valve. The true ID is around 27. Uh, the stent ID being 29, height of 19. So it's reasonable to use a 29 Sapien here. I think that would uh, fit well. And we're going to add a couple of CCs to it uh, to make sure we have good atrial and ventricular flaring. They copied the microphone. So, uh, no, actually, also, uh, let's ask uh, our surgical colleague, uh, Shinobu. So, this valve lasted 15 years. What is the story with the, I know the aortic valve, usually they last 10, 12 years, and this mitral lasted 15 years on this, uh, since inception. This case was done at 90, uh, patient was 54, now it's 69. So, is the usual story, or it lasts usually longer, it's shorter? I think the, the valve degeneration is, is a faster uh, when you are implanted at a younger age. So I think uh, she was implanted when she was 54. Yeah. yeah, so I think it was, uh, it, it lasted longer than, than usual. I think we see the degeneration later, uh, earlier. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is the 29 millimeter fit uh, and the, this is the CTA. So biggest question, as you know, in this valve uh, TMVR devices is the uh, basically LVOT obstruction. And that is where we do many things and many of the decide, uh, decisions are uh, made, uh, what to do. We have done this uh, sometimes, uh, uh, do an alcohol septal ablation, and, uh, have, and then many times, you know, the, the leaflet tear and all those uh, devices are coming. But in this particular case, we felt that there is a very low chance of LVOT obstruction. Um, Sahil, you know why? Yeah, so, uh, you know, Stam already showed it in the images. It's a, a big LVOT. Uh, the aortomitral angle is very favorable. So I, I think this is one of the ideal cases to do a, to offer a TMBR valve and valve, uh, relatively safe. Uh, and if you see the next slide, you'll see the new LVOT. 
which is which is huge. You need a number above 180, and this is already uh, around 500, 500 plus millimeter square. So you have a big LVOT already. You have a big LV cavity. I don't see any reason with uh, LVOT obstruction here, Dr. Sharma. So that's a very important point. So cutoff is about 180, and we have seen sometimes even the little septal bulge. It's about 130, 140. We do a septal ablation, and then comes back and become 190 to 100. So this is where uh, you know. Uh, the, then otherwise then you go through those lampoon and other procedures so this is basically to sum it up uh, this patient uh, although sts risk mortality is 4.5 percent which is kind of in that range um, remember used to be like three uh, and uh, five uh, or six or uh, three to eight uh, various definitions so it will be intermediate risk but patient was evaluated by the heart team and recommended transfemoral TMVR for being the high surgical risk due to comorbid conditions. So we thought transfemoral valve and valve TMVR via right percutaneous femoral vein access using 29 millimeter plus two cc Sapien 3 Ultra Resilia valve in a degenerated 29 millimeter perimount 6900 valve. So as you know that all cases, once we use the Sapien uh, 3 Ultra, we are using Resilia valves at uh, Sinai. So this is what we have in this particular case. And tell us now, what's your next step? You have done the transeptal. You have given the heparin. ACT is uh, three, uh, 300? Yes, ACT is above 300. Okay. Uh, next step is we're yeah. going to go with our uh, stiff fire. And okay, let's go HLS. back to our fluoro and uh, procedure now. Get me the HLS, please. ACT is okay? Yes, How more much? than 300 now. Okay, yeah. Good. And just keep telling us what you're doing so that so everybody are... can hear, yeah. That's nice. So we are now going with the safari, going to the left atrium, trying to place it either in the roof or in the pulmonary vein. It's good. It's good. good. Stay there. Let me see if I can uh, do it better. You're good. You're in the pulmonary vein, Dr. Kinney. Okay, good. So I'm in the pulmonary vein. That's a good place. So you can see how yes. the trajectory is. It's a very favorable trajectory for a valve and valve. Uh, okay. Dr. Kinney also showed what's when an ideal doing, spot how for transeptal. Do trans yeah. So this is a very good we sign. we will have to do the? Uh, the HLS. HLS. Or balloon. The HLS Clean. sheath is? No, that is just to... Help so as this, had, uh, yeah, it's a deflectible sheath, Dr. Sharma. Mm -hmm. We're going to deliver it first and then through it, we'll put a multi-purpose and a crossing wire. So STAM, the mechanism is uh, predominantly MS or MR? No, no, MS. predominantly MS. degenerative MS. Yeah, so I, I think that also determines what uh, wire we are going to use for crossing. For predominantly MS, we would use a straight stiff glide wire. And for MR lesions, we just go with a J wire. Okay. But... It's not, uh, it's only one leaflet, right? Uh, yeah, one leaflet, uh, it's not yeah. moving. Good. Okay, good. Okay, now we'll take out Minimal that. MR. Mm. You're in the pulmonary vein, as I was saying. So, get us a multipurpose multi catheter. Wire, please. Let's try J only, no? We can. Okay, so RAO view. So, we deflect it. Face it's into so... the... It looks like ready to go into the... Across the mitral valve already, yeah. Yeah. your edgely sheath, pointing very nicely. Yeah. So it also very tells you what your trajectory is here at this point. Yeah, Good. see? So it crossed. Okay. Yeah, you're crossed. Okay. I think you want to take this out. Uh, Get us a long yeah. pigtail. Give me a long pigtail. So we'll change it to a long pigtail and then use the same safari wire in to get into the LV. And on that wire, we will do the ballooning of the septum. So those who are steps. joining us for the structural, we have all the steps of the TMVR in June, July of 2022 case. Do you have so the last slide again? Case. So all the steps and the pictures and everything has been shown very detailed. They can get back to that uh, uh, nice uh, document uh, uh, of the steps of all the TMVR 
uh, cases. So actually, people have asked us in the past. We used to have one about uh, uh, in January of 19, uh, 2018 or 19, sorry, 18. And then now we are last year uh, in July. So you can remove Very the nice, spectacle yeah. now if you want. OK. But you don't have the slides now, I says, of the steps. No, I just refer to it because we, it was multiple. There were like seven, eight slides, which hmm. are all the individual steps by steps went through, which you're describing it now. Let's center the screen. You want to hmm. make sure you go slow so it doesn't kick out your system here. OK, we are good. Now go to the... We want to make sure the curve is facing down, yeah. downwards. Okay, pressure go to 200 scale now. We are not in the LV, we're in the aorta now. Okay, now we will take out the agilis. Um, Wait, take it off. Let's balloon first. Leave it there. Yeah. Okay, now tell us about the balloon sizes and the length and size. 14. It's a usually a 14 top. millimeter, yeah. 40 length. Okay. So that's what we are going to use. Let's try to go with that. Hold the... Balloon, leave it. The valve ready? In the coordination of two people, so the wire should not come out. And uh, so it's a very nice position. And the balloon, so the balloon is being is cracked. Yeah. yeah. Keep on. Right there. Good. This is it. We are across the septum. Uh, Stam, so do you see us? What, what, you... Across the septum. I think no. we Came pulled on. back. We, yeah. Uh, Let me go back. Yeah. yeah do, do one more time. One more time. Yeah. Yes, yes. We are going Good. up now again. Yeah. Yeah, you are across. You are across the septum. Yeah. yeah that's very important. Yes. Yeah. You saw the dent? Yes. Okay, yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. <clears throat> What's the diameter of this balloon, uh, Anu? 14. 14 millimeter length okay. is a 40 yeah so good. it's a standard balloon we use for and also what we'll do is the deflated balloon it's a good test for us to make sure the trajectory sure. is good we'll go in like this you see that yep okay so good. look at now that trajectory. It's, yeah. it's very nice now, some people use 12 millimeter also, right? Or, yes, so 23, 26. Uh, if you're using smaller valves, uh, 12 is okay, SS. Okay. But okay. for bigger valves, we like uh, 14. Okay. Okay, good. Down. Well, your concern is not to create a bigger ASD. Right. Okay, come out. So we we'll first take we the balloon again? out, then we'll remove the... Okay, hold on, uh, right? Stay there, but can we... Well, I think we can take again? both together. Yeah. Uh, I think we're no, good, right? Balloon out, then it is. Okay. So again, you want to make sure uh, that you have enough working length. The valve is ready. Okay. Okay, I'm coming out with the. Come. Okay. Push the wire. Good. Advance. Okay. Come here. Out. Out. So this is the only case we never suture the sheath because. Uh, you have to pull the sheath below to adjust the valve as we're going up okay now we are ready with the valve good so the skirt in this case has to be in the opposite direction mm -hmm. compared to your um Tavern. Retrograde tower, yeah. Yeah. Skirt is in the opposite direction. I'm confirming it. Okay. Okay, good. And I'm going slow. And what about the Edward E? Has to, e has to be down, facing down. Facing yeah. down, yeah. So everything opposite. Yes. Usually we go up, then with the tower. And now it's a down. And of course the valve has to be in the right way. And okay, stop now. Here. You want me to pull the guide by, i mean the sheath down a little bit we should be good again okay good. Push the wire. just advance the wire advance the wire so same steps we bring the balloon under the valve here okay good nice it's pretty good mm -hmm. and we're just gonna flex our way in 
वन सेकेंड टू पर्सन यू नीड कोऑर्डिनेशन हेयर मेक श्योर नथिंग होल्डिंग द वाल इज वेरी गुड यू कैन सी दैट वेरी नाइस गुड ओके गुड कम ऑफ I think we are good, right? We yeah, always keep in the inferior there, yeah. border. Where should be the valve in position with inferior the border. perimount? Yeah, so inferior so, border of the perimount. So I'm going to pull back a little bit. So you see there? Yeah, so yeah. that's good. So we have to go slow. Amazing. It's Amazing. at an angle. We have to go slow as we inflate. It will uh, pace 180, pace, please. 180. Hold the wire. And it's a 29 plus 2 cc, 31. See now. Off. Good. What do you think? So you see, it's a little bit high. Uh, yeah, we want to go, go slightly. Oh, actually, oh, okay, okay, it came down. Okay, 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 okay. So we'll make a micro adjustment yes, during deployment. Yes, that's going then. up. Okay. 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 Base one eighty. One eighty. To go a little more okay. in now. Go. Yeah. In in, in, a little bit in. Go, okay. in 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 in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 In, yeah. Good. Right. There, there, okay. There's go. Talking, please. Yeah. Yeah. Go. There's good. Go 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 go. No, just pull it back. Go. Yeah, good there. Oh. No. Good. Uh, good. Go, go, yeah. go, good. Yeah. So it's full, slow. Full, full, There's full. no rush here, Sine. You want to make sure you land it up perfectly. And we are going to do one more. Huh? Mm. Okay, and stop. Off. Off. Look at that. That's yeah, perfect. Nice placement. So we adjusted That's, as we were going. Let's do one more. Did we floor us here? I don't know. Probably not. Let's do one more. Okay, mm -hmm. we will. Amazing. Blood no, pressure has come up. Okay. Recovered good. Yeah. Do one okay, more. Okay, 180. Make sure you go full. Huh? Yeah. Okay, good. Sir, full. Don't do anything. Let me come out. Okay. Off pacer. Off. 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 Yeah. Come out. Come out. Okay. okay very nice okay. okay oh unbelievable unbelievable wow wow look at that okay yeah. tell us the echo and all those uh, Come yeah. things no 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 mr open white open leaflets no pvl measure the gradient let us see it uh, stem we don't yeah, see show it. the echo on the main screen now please because that okay. is the key yeah leave your hand please get me a pigtail please Okay. Yeah, we measure the gradient. The stem, the your echo is shown there. So tell us whatever you are seeing, whatever you yeah. want to mean, show to the mean gradient of audience. One. Mean, mean gradient, gradient of, of two. Two. One. Two to one. Matra valve. Nothing. No PVL. Good deployment. What, what no valvular for? MR. We make some pull back into the some three D hemodynamics. Actually, as you saw, while it's being deployed. Uh, Dr. Larakra or echocardiographer used the word "beautiful." <laughs> it truly looks beautiful. Unbelievable. 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 Yeah, and that is true. Look at the instantaneous gratification. Hundred percent functioning valve. So you can see the valve in the middle. In this case, I, 3D. you know, while going up, it we definitely had to adjust. Ne Yeah, minimal, so, minimal if any. So the trick MR, is first uh, uh, the second person have to have a lot of coordination here. Um, go very slow, and the first person is doing micro adjustments, as you were seeing, uh, Dr. Moreno. Uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Kinney was doing very tiny micro adjustments to land up exactly where we wanted. So, yeah, it was a <clears throat> beautiful illustration, step by step, absolutely perfect. Oh, we want to do a LV. This is Iota. Yeah, so LV. Let's do LV LA. So we're ready to pull back. Is that okay with everyone? Stamp looks yeah. good to you. Yeah, Go to the perfect. floor or now? Looks perfect. Yeah. Floor Go zero down. first before we pull you back. Measure this. The gradient, please. Okay. Go back to hemodynamics and the floor, please. Very, 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 very quick. Very quick. Measure for LV for what? Very quick. Continuous Doppler. Continuous and Doppler. Down back and down. Continue. Good. Continuous Doppler. Ah. Uh? Show the hemodynamic tracing also. Ready? Yeah, good. Okay, that's now. It. Take it. Yeah. Show what you want need to do. Go to 50 scale. Yeah. 
LVL again. Both 50 scale. The pressure looks a little high in the LA. Huh? Uh, we're just going to zero. Go to both 50 scale. Oh, good. Okay, there, now there. we are okay. Yeah. Yeah. Done, yeah. Okay. Good. Zero gradient now. Zero yeah. gradient. Yeah, one. We got one. One. Yeah. And uh, the LVOT gradient is five. No change. No. Fantastic. And the region is also blood pressure very high. 170 over. Uh, mm. Yeah, you have a V wave that is a little larger, but yeah. no MR. Absolutely yeah. no, no MR. MR. On the echo. No MR, nothing. Okay. Okay, good. So now tell us what's the next steps. Uh, no, we will uh, just take this pigtail back. Okay. We will use a VAR, take the pigtail out. He, uh, he will show you any flow across the septum. Usually it's not a lot. No bad, eh? And then we're ready to close. Deliver. So there is, uh, obviously, these patients have LA compliance issues. Uh, uh -huh. So you see that V-wave post-procedure, you'll mm -hmm. still have a large V-wave. And I, I think what happens is that this um, ASD, unless you have severe TR or severe RV dysfunction, is actually beneficial because it helps in uh, LA shunting. Mm. Okay. The Maybe we could see it uh, left to right only a little show bit. Show the echo again uh, yeah, for that. Uh, no. For the septum yes. stem. Uh, if show the echo. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, they want to see the ASD? Left to right. With the left Yeah, we can measure it here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Looks like 1.6 to 1. <laughs> 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 Eyeball QPQS. <laughs> okay, tell us the echo QPQS. Uh, we'll take a little bit, few measurements, but... Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You can start your. Mm -hmm. Just now. finish and then. Uh, point seven. Point seven uh, <laughs> centimeters length. And uh, point four width. Okay. So seven by four millimeters. Okay. So it's small. Left to right. right to, left to right flow. Okay. And Thank RV you, is good now. Yeah, RV, RV is not, uh, not bad. To start with, was mild down. Okay. No, no much TR, no pulmonary hypertension. Beautiful. All right. So now post-procedure strategy, you know, a lot of data are, there is no consensus, but it is that you should give anticoagulation for these patients at least for 3 to 12 months. So we routinely giving, unless there is a contraindication, uh, a warfarin is preferred, although no X can be given. So any one agent, this patient should get anticoagulation because a lot of data on the TMVR field has occurred that if you have no anticoagulation, event rate is higher, uh, with thrombosis, valve thrombosis, and so So you need to give anticoagulation till it's endothelized within 3 to 12 months. Some people give it for 6 months. And uh, so but this patient was, there's no need by itself uh, because it was not in AFib. If they, they are in AFib, then there's no question anyway. Uh, but uh, otherwise, for the valve purposes, we should be doing it. So, any questions, uh, uh, Pedro, before we go on to the didactic discussion of the uh, today's case? No questions so far. Okay. Beautiful. So, uh, just to show that how easy and safe this procedure has become, and that too using the sapien valves. Now, uh, I'm going to show a lot of the dedicated TMVR valves, how f the field will grow uh, with those, uh, uh, the valves coming in the our life. Okay, with that note, look, let's go with the slide uh, pr uh, presentation now. How are you going to close the vascular access, uh, Sahil? I, I think just per close, one per close for the vein should be enough. One per close. One per close, yeah. Okay. So but the TMVR, as you know, with the intrepid, we are doing the venous cut down now. Because there was, there was a very high chance of vascular complication. So we are using the TM cut down in those cases. So basically, I'm going to show you some data uh, in the TMVR field with a mitral trial, uh, five-year outcome, 1092 plus, transeptal TMVR Apollo EFS with the intrepid and new TMVR devices. So basically, remember this field started many years ago by using the, uh, in the, the sapien valve in various MR subgroups. One is bioprosthetic failure, which is valvin valve, then failed annual plastic ring, valvin ring, and severe MAC. And then until you do it, you do not know. And what happened? Once they did valvin valve, valvin ring, valvin MAC. Original data is the 2017 uh, presented by uh, Mario Guerrera was only 90 patients, 30, 30, 30. Then they accumulated more experience. And you can see here uh, that uh, large number of patients, majority of them in valvin valve. So overall, 
success rate is the highest in the valve and valve and other complication particularly death is highest in the valve in mac so this is basically the message uh, and it was the same uh, aki uh, vascular injury everything will be higher in the valve in mac uh, and then we have follow up of these patients and very interesting say well maybe it is just procedure related so that what you do you do and landmark analysis after 30 days and you see here uh, clearly that it's even after 30 days it is the valve in mac continues to give trouble you see the about two third of the patients are dead at one year now you say well if i would not have replaced it what was the mortality maybe 90 percent but this is where the we have the data and then uh, in the bottom uh, we show the anticoagulation and no anticoagulation so clearly thrombosis happens more with the no anticoagulation so had to be given and the landmark 30 days and event continues to occur in these patients so in my opinion valvin mac is almost not indicated unless there is no, no other option so what they did is the this group of people also now presented the five year data uh, just published uh, a few months ago uh, in jack and these are the three groups uh, of the patients who are followed as you can see there and the message remains about the same these are the original 90 patients uh, that 79 percent survival uh, and uh, particularly in the valvin valve has the best survival compared to valvin ring and valvin mac almost uh, two-third of the patients are dead at five years now mitral regurgitation severity as a group continue to beneficial so what was seen that it's not the mortality the once you have the valve there of course patient with a valve in mac will die because of maybe comorbid condition but efficacy point of view remained very effective from the mitral regurgitation point of view quality of life nyha everything was fantastic so only thing is patient with a valve in mac had a higher death rate uh, so shunov you want to comment on it why it should be it was not because of the re regurgitation yes in the study they found residual regurgitation higher mortality but overall effectiveness point of view after you come out of the acute episode they are very quite effective but these patients with a valve in mac they continue to have a higher mortality at follow up Uh, sometimes it's surrogate marker with the patient's uh, baseline hmm. comorbidities. So um, I think the uh, that's also has something to do with the the poor outcome. Uh, I know they adjust they did the adjustment for the baseline comorbidities, but I think the MAC, if if you have a, like a severe MAC inside the heart in annuals, I think that means some underlying um, like a. For prognosis, we yeah, have poor prognosis itself, because of probably diffuse uh, itself, yeah. disease <laughs> process, atherosclerotic right. process, and so. So basically, conclusion was that valvin valve, mitral valvin ring, and MAC procedures were associated with sustained improvement of heart failure symptoms and quality of life among survivors at five years. Transcatheter heart valve function remained stable in all three groups. Patient treated with valvin valve had excellent survival at five years, where survival was lower in the valvin ring and valvin max consistent with underlying disease severity as you said and patient with more residual mitral regurgitation had higher mortality clearly every study of the tmvr uh, of the tr all have shown your residual mitral regurgitation post procedure out determines the outcome but in this group of patient it is the valvin valve has the best outcome versus valvin mac now, this is not the one story. There are many other studies, mitral trials and TVT registry, Vivid registry, Urena and TMVR registry, all showing the MAC on the top, Valvin ring in the middle and Valvin valve in the bottom. Look at the success rate. Mitral, you have a 100% success rate in Valvin valve, like the case which we did here. Of course, it goes to 95, 96. But when you go to MAC, everything goes bizarre uh, i mean bizarre basically higher mortality higher lvot obstruction in all those things so you had to be careful and the planning there is a mitral two pivotal trial ongoing at present uh, to get uh, the sapien while they are working with other device now many of these cases uh, since there is a trouble both, both surgical point of view and percutaneous point of view they have done the direct transatrial tmvr Basically, basically taking the sapien valve and suture it. Shunobu, uh, any experience? I know we, some cases have been done at Sinai uh, using the, uh, the our sapien valve and suture it percutaneously go through the transatrium. Right. You mean the uh, the the direct uh, direct TMVR? Yeah. 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 We we 
we've done it. Uh, like uh, the one we cannot do the continuously, but it's still like a like a let's say severe um, uh, valve degeneration. You, you just uh, switch it so that you can get the better anchor. Anchor. Uh, yeah. So yep. uh, I think that's a good alternative if you cannot the uh, access with the proctinously. Perfect. So yeah. this basically is that you can put the valve will sit in, and so so there is a nice uh, paper about how to manage the MAC. MAC is the big problem, I would say, from the uh, mitral point of view, that you decide after a hard team discussion, surgical risk, anatomical feasibility, uh, role of medical and functional period of, uh, optimization, and suitability of TMVR, the prohibitive surgical risk. is to, If somebody is suitable for repair, you do mitral valve repair. If not suitable, and then anatomy is suitable for replacement, then patient who go for mitral valve replacement. Then question comes down to that patients have prohibitive surgical risk and have a favor favorable anatomy for TMVR with accept acceptable risk. Those are the appropriate patients for TMVR. Now, if it's not favorable anatomy and patient cannot go for surgery, clearly what you're going to do is patients on medical management and so. Uh, so nice, uh, there are a lot of devices, as you can see here, uh, every few uh, year, I would say, one comes up, other one goes away. Uh, Sapien M3, actually, from Edward, is uh, undergoing various trials, I mean, trials and Intrepid and 10.9 data are there. Some of them have disappeared. Elta valve is still ongoing. Some early clinical experience, see that 12, 12, 13, 14, a small number of cases being done. But two kind of has come to near the finish line. One is the intrepid with Apollo, Metronic TMVR, uh, and comparatively surgical mitral valve replacement. And 10-9 is the summit, uh, except the cases who are non-surgical, then of course the, those get basically uh, is uh, the device. And Abbott TMVR, uh, surgical mitral valve repair and replacement. Now actually going forward, all the TMVR devices are undergoing comparison with the mitral clip, because TR is a very safe procedure. So high surgical risk, not inoperable, High surgical risk, good anatomy, uh, mitral clip is coming into the equation. Uh, so the uh, tendine is the summit pivotal trial, roll in and MAC arm. Uh, data showed this is a very uh, peculiar design. It's kind of three frames, I mean three portions I would say of this, uh, three or four. Uh, inner frame of the valve, then outer frame which control design, uh, shape of the native valve. Then there is a teether and then apical pad. And because it's done transapical, not transeptal yet, transapical. And this actually had done a lot of data. This actually started uh, before even Intrepid. And uh, we actually have the randomization of the 382, tendine versus mitral clip. As I said, the FDA mandated them to randomize the cases, cases against mitral clip. Then those who are initially roll-in cases and those are MAC, they clearly go to the tendine valve only. So there's a lot of data, a lot of things are happening. These are the high-risk patients. And uh, overall, it seems to be very good procedural survival, good technical success of 95 plus percent with this device, uh, and uh, very rare uh, some acute complications do occur. Now, 30-day mortality of 11%, 27% at one year is expected for these patients. But look at the bleeding. Almost one-fourth to one-third of the patients have bleed. So clearly that one issue in all these valves have been is the bleeding. Now, in this one is because it's a transept, but transapical. Of course, there is a much issue bleeding and these have so many comorbid conditions and elderly patients. But once they come out, overall risk uh, uh, at a one year survival was reasonable. MR severity, what is the big advantage of this TMER valves that they eliminate the regurgitation uh, um, the, completely. So there is uh, almost no, none to trivial MR and that persist, including the based on the echo assessment and uh, heart failure symptoms and quality of life improvement. Then for the MAC, they actually have shown the data also, 120 patients uh, with the MAC, which is a little more complex, as we all know, uh, had a bad, uh, not a favorable outcome using the Sapien. And uh, these are again elderly patients, uh, high risk uh, for, and the survival, uh, the success was still quite good while implanted. Uh, and uh, emergency surgery intervention occurs in a small 5.8% of cases. Acute episode, 30 day outcomes were acceptable, and the 
clearly that uh, eff efficacy point of view, MR was completely obliterated uh, along with the uh, improvement in KCCQ score as well as heart failure classification and the echo improvement. So basically, uh, they mentioned that uh, for the MAC point of view, 30 day mortality of 7%, major bleeding is the important complication which we need to take care of it and of course they need to have one year data. Now there is another group also submit for, presented with a 10 dine uh, with a two year data looks quite good and it has been approved in uh, in Europe as a C mark approval uh, but we don't have it approval in United States yet. The V actually with Dr. Adams is the PI of the Apollo trial, uh, we have been in various aspects. So initially started with the surgical TMVR and then in the MAC patients and it turns out to be even at our center, like many other centers, the surgical point of view, which is go transapical kind of has gone to the back uh, on the, the background and very few patients are being done that, that way and uh, basically being done with the transeptal which is the TMVR with the early feasibility system, transeptal. It looks like a, just like you're putting a tear, but of course, a little more complex. Uh, it comes in various sizes. The device itself getting some trouble, some uh, uh, with the various sizes or so. So it's uh, going up various uh, reiteration and change, but intrepid valve design, transeptal, early data of the 30 day, uh, which were very uh, impressive in terms of the efficacy, mitral regurgitation all disappear. New York Heart Association classification, fantastic. Zero mortality, zero stroke, zero reintervention, no pacemaker, except there were two things. Very high ASD closure because of big hole you create and 40% vascular complication. So we learned that. So in the initial the cases, we were not part, then we became part of it. And we had done eight cases now. Yes. I think eight cases of uh, transeptal and we are doing a vascular venous cut down in these cases and have been a very well. So we had now have the one year data presented in uh, uh, TCT last month uh, and showing the same. One clinical outcome as you can see, no stroke, vascular complications uh, and uh, the re-intervention, very small 3%, hospitalization expected about 20%, but mitral regurgitation, very effective, very good in terms of symptom improvement in the NYHA class. So device is great, it's a two sizes available now, 42 and 48. Uh, there was a little trouble in uh, one of the sides, I think 48, and then has been taken care of. So clearly, if we have to sum the intrepid transfemoral TMVR system in a larger cohort uh, to uh, continue to demonstrate excellent valve function and safe transfemoral valve delivery, this is steady documented favorable performance and no mortality stroke or 30 days. And one year of excellent uh, valve performance. And I think overall, uh, about 150 cases have been done with the transeptal uh, TMVR. Another simultaneously going is the Sapien M3 TMVR. Very nice. First, they put a dock, nitinol dock designed to encircle the native mitral leaflet to provide an anchor for the Sapien M3 valve. And this is a two part uh, and uh, very effective undergoing the trial called Encircle uh, with the various, the main study, the MAC registry and failed tier registry. And uh, we'll know over the years that how this valve performed. But it looks very good design point of view. There's another valve, uh, which actually was uh, the CPIA TMVR system. Many of them keep coming. So very important field, which is going to happen. As you know, the tier, indication of the tier are expanding with the Pascal and more reiteration of the uh, G4 uh, and uh, expanded indication for the TR because of the different clip and same Pascal improvement which of, uh, of uh, Edwards. So issue will remain that which person should get TMVR, we should get TR. If they are suitable, both can be. All FDA will require now comparing the TMVR with the TR uh, in a high risk patient if they are suitable for TR because TR has been shown to be a very, very low complication. And of course, we know not every patient can get the TR because one of the biggest limitation remains is the anchoring and creating a stenosis. So, Stem, you want to comment on it? Because this is quite a bit happening. Two points that patient, the TR success. One, residual MR. And secondly, if you created stenosis. So, uh, how yes. the field is evolving in this field, in the way? In the, for the mitral clip. Mitral clip yes, or yes. Pascal, yeah. So, I mean, the... <coughs> The issue is to try to uh, to decrease the MR to mild, uh, to mild at, mo at most, and also to not have a gradient more than a four to five millimeters mercury residual gradient. Uh, appears that the gradient is more important for a primary MR than secondary MR, but about four to five 
with the Mrs. Mercury for both uh, primary and secondary. That should be the maximal uh, that you should accept uh, as a result of the procedure. Yeah. So it's a combination of both. You have to decrease the regurgitation to mild or less, and your gradient should be less than 10 or 5. So 5 is the ideal. Uh, and this is where little difference in the degenerative versus functional 5 versus 10. But overall, you don't create the stenosis. You bring it down, and that happens now actually overall in about 95% of cases. So very interesting, uh, and so so let me just complete it. Uh, uh, TMVR update of 2023. TMVR devices are increasing, and they're used in is evolving in the carefully planned clinical research trial. Initial data of TMVR devices are satisfactory with very high procedural success rate with reasonably low complication except the vascular. We have to work on vascular. Only subgroup of TMVR in MAC remains challenging with high short and long term mortality. Sapient percutaneous heart valve is the most commonly device used for high surgical risk mitral valve disease patients, especially valve and valve procedures. New devices for TMVR have great promise and transeptal TMVR is poised to change this field with excellent device performance, safety with increasing focus in reducing vascular complications. And the mitral valve degeneration due to MAC continues to be challenging and newer devices are focusing in the treatment of this very high risk challenging subset. Advanced imaging modality, 3D, T, 4D, virtual CT are vital in careful patient selection and proper procedural planning. We, uh, Sahil, we had done what, two or three cases of TMVR in the MAC this year? Yes, so uh, MAC is very risky as you've already discussed and we've seen data from uh, Myra's group. Uh, we've done three cases, uh, but they were very carefully selected patients. You want to make sure you have good uh, anchoring uh, calcium arc and I, I think you're really worried about embolization in these patients. So we've done three cases with excellent results. And um, it has to be like almost circular calcium, correct? Yeah, more than 270 arc. Uh, you want to make sure there are no big gaps because device embolization is a big problem. And like Shinobu said, these patients are very, very sick. Uh, very sort of, it's a prognostic marker in my opinion, the amount of uh, MAC you have and we've uh, data behind it now. So, yeah. uh, this time you want to comment on MAC, uh, MAC yeah, and TMBR? Yeah, uh, the same as uh, Sahil said, you know, you have to have a, a circular all, all around uh, calcium in order for the valve to anchor. And uh, the problem with this also is uh, PVL because, uh, you know, if the valve deployment is not perfect, and the, because of the calcium, everything is irregular. You may develop a PVL. So that's that's why uh, valve in MAC is a very difficult uh, procedure and not uh, as uh, valve in uh, uh, ring or valve in valve uh, procedures. So, so Anu, as you know, that uh, now patients with the intermediate to high risk were suitable. Uh, they all these TMVR will be c compared against the TR. And TR is knowing that very simple, easier, and uh, you finish usually in 15, 20 minutes. You think they have any chance to stand against the TMVR? I mean, against the TR, these new devices, in terms of performance, success, and uh, uh, complications? I think even the valve, once the learning curve is done, like we showed, we could be as fast as uh, we just showed today. Um, I know from cut down, we have to become to percutaneous. Um, though the current device has multiple knobs, but uh, once we learned, uh, we should be able to get it. But the question is, would any valve, since anatomy is so complex, would we get uh, one or two valves that will uh, come to the finish line? It's, uh, uh, Dr. Kini, it's very similar to MitraClip, right? When we started doing MitraClip, used to be a two, three hour case. Now MitraClip is a 15, 20 minute case. So it's just a matter of operator experience, right patient selection and, and your uh, timings are going to be, you're going to have more cadence and more efficiency. No, the valves means uh, you see in the design, which valve design will actually be the one that will uh, make it to the market. Right. That's that's where I think we're still uh, going through the various phases. Yeah. Once that is done, yes, then will be the learning curve for us. Yeah, so use TL right. volume, yeah. So since the Pascal got approval last year, uh, they also come into the second period in the market. Uh, along with the, uh, there are some data of the class 2D, compare Pascal with the, uh, with the mitral clip tier and did show equal outcome, except that uh, the time was less, but again, it's part of the learning curve, but efficacy point of view, both were equal 
and uh, we actually will be using uh, uh, the appropriate cases. Try to we always need to diversify your experience uh, using a Pascal in appropriate cases. Uh, is there a difference where you should use a mitral? I mean the mitral clip versus Pascal. We still need to understand more, but uh, comparative data are identical in terms of their outcome. So let me quickly finish my uh, three questions. The following statements are correct for five-year outcome of the mitral trial of the high-risk mitral uh, MR involving valvin valve, valvin ring, valvin mac, except sustained benefit in death and heart failure in all TMVR types, sustained uh, quality of life improvement in all TMVR types, sustained reduction in MR in all TMVR types. TMVR done for valvin ring has the highest mortality at follow-up. And answer is wrong. D is not because valvin mac has the highest mortality at follow-up. Second. Following statements are true regarding the one-year outcome of the intrepid transeptal TMVR, except significant reduction in MR persists up to one year, uh, reduction in NYHA class persists up to one year, vascular complication occurs in 10 to 15 percent of cases, and procedural success continues to increase over time. Answer is uh, C is wrong because vascular complication in the reported was up to 40 percent, although now in the recent data will be less. So we actually had about eight cases, we had no complication in these transeptal. TMVR. Lastly, following are the trials including the TMVR devices except Summit, Co-opt, Apollo and N-Circle and basically it is the Co-opt which is not the TMVR, it is the mitral clip. Uh, with that note, we uh, Pedro, we complete our presentation today and uh, you can, can conclude it. If any <coughs> questions, we can take it. Yeah, well, there is no questions and um, I want to thank the heart team members in the cath lab and thank you all of you for joining us for this very exciting case. Remember, the recording of this case will be archived at our website, www.cccLifeCases.org, later today. Now, structural hard life cases occur every other month on Tuesdays, um, but at the end of the year, we recycle. So our next case is going to be Tuesday, January 9 at 9 a.m. So thank you so much for joining us today.